Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. If you like this series, then please subscribe, click the bell notifications so you always get Bamford Rose videos as we release them and please comment. This question is about the fuel that we put in our Aston Martins and it's very pertinent to me at, at this moment in time because I recently got caught out myself by putting a poor quality fuel in a high performance two stroke motorcycle that I run. The question is which fuels are bioethanol free? As you may know if you follow this channel, follow, follow Bamford Rose by trade, I'm 30 years in, I'm a performance development emissions calibration engineer, I've worked for Aston Martin, Bentley, Jaguar, Land Rover, a few consultancies and burning petrol is my bag. So I'll brush over some of the technical aspects and simplify it when I talk about this. If you wanna go off and do your own research into bioethanol, that's probably the best thing. I'll give you my commentary. I think it was universally understood to those in the know that bioethanol is bad in terms of the search for ultimate performance, which for the cars that we're involved in is what we're all about. It's probably okay on your family daily driver to push five or 10% diluted concentration of gasoline, diluted with ethanol through it, and just keep running it week in, week out, and it's never gonna cause any problem. It gets the governments in the West less reliant on Gulf states, which is what they wanna do. And probably these governments have got family members that are running the bioethanol refineries, so they're making a few quid on the side. But in terms of saving the environment, a green fuel, bioethanol is not. The diesel required to farm it, ship it around everywhere, refine it, is, it makes a mockery of the whole concept of why the bioethanol idea was created. I remember in the early 2000s that we looked at putting an Aston Martin V8 Vantage onto E85, so this is 85% concentration bioethanol. You need to have flex fuel, sensing devices in the engine management system to realize that it's on the, the different fuel and totally change the stoichiometric AFR for ethanol so that you put in more fuel to get the same power back. When we realized what the tank range was gonna be, and it was ridiculous, I can't remember exactly what it was now, but you know, it, it, it was like 150 mile range for, what was it, 80, 90 liter tank it was ridiculous. So the the concept was just knocked on the head. And at that time, people were conscious that the fuel industry was gonna be robbing pandas and humans of food because the crops needed to be grown somewhere. So it, it really didn't take off. Then all of a sudden, probably states led. This was probably in, in some direction Obama took the country in. All of a sudden, E10 becomes commonplace. Europe, mainland Europe, it's E10. And so far in the UK, the current legislation is that all regular fuel, or 95 octane fuel, must be 5% bioethanol. There is no legislation for ultimate, but V Power, BP Ultimate, Tesco Momentum, they all have bioethanol in their ultimate. And this is what makes me feel so strongly about it because I've gone out of my way to fill jerry cans up at V Power for using BP Ultimate and I've been putting bioethanol in it. It makes me really cross. Uh, the purpose of this video is to showcase Esso as being the only fuel company in the UK whose ultimate does not contain any bioethanol. You can go on their website, check that out, I'll show a link here, and you can then find out that even though the SO ultimate has E5 branding on the pump, they've been forced to do this by the government to keep the charade up of the push to green for the fossil fuel market, but there's no ethanol in it. We'll run a little experiment later um, to, uh, to show that. I just very quickly, just here, this is the chemical makeup of gasoline without any ethanol in. This is the chemical makeup of ethanol. You'll see that big reduction in hydrocarbons. And if you're paying attention at school, there's your big bang. Take that away and you've got a less efficient fuel. Litre for litre or however volume per volume, 
bioethanol is about 30% less performance. Optimistically, I think it's worse. The industry itself states that it's going to be about 5% less fuel economy. So it's less fuel efficient, you have to put more of it in. Uh, it gives you less power. There's a heap of side effects of that ethanol running through your engine and where the increased emissions to farm it, refine it, it all makes it a complete mockery. And as I say, it's okay your daily driver, I suppose, because the only benefit is if the government wanted, they're less reliant on Gulf states. But this channel, what this company is for, everything we do, this is about using fuel for the most amount of performance and bioethanol isn't doing that. It'd be good to get quite a few comments going, you know, if people want to champion bioethanol, great, comment below, because then we can get a discussion going instead of me just waffling on about how rubbish the fuel is. I just want to put the message across that the fuel is bad. You'll get more performance on your Aston Martin if you don't have any ethanol content in the fuel tank. And I wanted to do a quick experiment to show that despite SO being forced to show E5 on their pumps, it's not, there's no ethanol content in it. Very quickly, why you get more performance on your Aston Martin. If the car was flex fuel, it could detect that ethanol to a high percentage was in the gas tank. It would then react to that and put more fuel in to get you back to the same performance that you should have had if it was on neat gasoline. The Aston Martins haven't got that. Um, and worse than that, in closed loop fuel, what they'll do is adjust the fueling value to get Lambda 1. But it doesn't carry that across to the open loop fueling values when you go full throttle. So if you needed a few extra percent fuel, you know, you're on E5 to get to Lambda 1. As soon as you go full throttle for performance, those adaptions will be lost and it will be running leaner air fuel ratio than what it should be for maximum performance because the car isn't flex fuel. So, you know, try it for yourself. Uh, if you've been running V-Power like me, blindly, naively, and you feel a bit upset now that you are aware of this situation, then you know get it down to vapors and then fill with a tank of esso and and just notice the difference this will be the stellar artois for your car okay on to the experiment um i'm only going to do this in small quantities so the content of ethanol in the fuel is going to be subtle if i was mixing the fuel with water to a much bigger volume then how the water drew the ethanol out and the layer of ethanol would be much uh, more striking. But this is small numbers because I'm just proving a point. The point here is that SO has got no bioethanol in it. Okay, so onto the experiment. We've got three fuels. We've got SO Ultimate, we've got BP, we've got V Power. If you look at the SO, where it's settled, you see a clear defined line between the water and the gasoline. When you see the V power and BP ultimate in the bowl and shake it, it's got this wavy, sloshy line to it and that's where the ethanol sitting on top of the water is contacting the petrol. So there's a quick and dirty experiment just to show that the SO Ultimate does indeed have no ethanol content in it whatsoever. And all the others that if, like me, you were naively putting in your tank, thinking that it was the best fuel for your car, then it shows that they do contain ethanol. If that's narked you like it's narked me, then go off and do your own research about the benefits of ethanol, the, the, the the performance loss, all the bad things it does for your engine, absolutely everything involved with it. There's some great resources out there. I mean, this is the BBC article, which talks about the bioethanol fuel refining industry falling on its knees if it doesn't, if the UK doesn't go E10 like the rest of Europe. I mean, this article tells you all you need to know. Typical BBC propaganda, 
because it isn't saying, hey, this fuel is the best for the environment, it's uh, energy saving, blah, blah, blah. The main reason that we should increase the ethanol content in our fuel tanks is because the bioethanol refining industry, if we don't, is on its knees. Again, probably because the very politicians have family members running those bioethanol refineries. So we just end by repeating, search out an SO garage. Hope you've enjoyed that video and it really helps us if you can like, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you always get up to date Bamford Rose videos.